the police seem pretty sure that Jesse Smollett faked a hate crime against himself. Now, his career is on the rocks, and the reaction of the public has gone from, in some cases, disappointment, and in other cases, outright disgust. But there's another scandal here, how the media reacted to his claims. Do Trump supporters just go hunting for black gay film stars on the streets of Chicago in cold temperatures in late hours of the night? Well, you would think that some journalists might question his rather fantastical claims, but they didn't do that. Instead, they let the emotions fly. Absolutely despicable. Danny, this is a horrible story, no matter what kind of uh, attack or crime it was. This is horrific. Horrendous and unacceptable. This is horrible to report. And this is America in 2019. Now, celebrities are prone to a little high-profile virtue signaling, but journalists are supposed to be held to higher standards. Do you remember when MSNBC's Rachel Maddow was sobbing over photographs of children in cages and blaming it squarely on Donald Trump when it turns out that a similar policy was in place when Barack Obama was in command? Trump administration officials have been sending babies and other young children oh. <laughs> to at least three Three tender age shelters in South Texas. Lawyers and medical providers just... <sighs> Do you remember the shell-shocked boy from Aleppo? The media went into an overdrive, fitting this heart-wrenching image into their anti-Russian narrative, even though the actual facts told a different story. But why bother fact-checking when crying is much more effective? What strikes me is we shed tears, but there are no tears here. He doesn't cry once. That little boy is in total shock. He's stunned. This is Omron. He's alive. We wanted you to know. So what is all this virtue signaling actually trying to achieve? Well, take it from one of the best in the business. How do you know you're being lied to? How do you know you're being manipulated? How do you know there's something not right with the coverage? When they simplify it all and there's no gray, we seem to be doing today is substituting um, the law and the courts for trial by media. So, with this kind of atmosphere in the media and this level of discourse in American politics, ensuring that justice stays blind when it comes to the Jussie Smollett case gets a little bit trickier. Caleb Maupin, RT, New York. Former Wall Street Journal correspondent Joe Loria thinks the discourse and the role of these news anchors like us have transformed greatly over the years, not for the best. What has happened is what that film network predicted, that the, the anchor or the presenter becomes the story. They have their own show now. They're paid enormous amounts of money, millions and millions of dollars a year to be the face of the news and people are supposed to tune in because of a personality not the news and it's an entertainment show much more than news and a bunch of people just gabbing and they're wasting money on those salaries and no longer paying for producers on tv networks to do real reporting and the journal and the people who represent us don't have a journalistic background like they did in the 60s and 70s they did not work in newspapers they're actors their personalities uh they they look good and they can read off a teleprompter uh and it's you know and there's people there who are discussing the news just uh you know, opinions. So th that there is no more real television news, unfortunately. It's very sad to say.